Hi everyone, we're here at 10th Mountain Whiskey and Spirit Company. We're gonna take you through the distillery, introduce you to some of the people that make up this beautiful brand. Let's get started. Whiskey is defined as a spirit made from malted grain, but we know it's so much more than that. Whiskey is passion. It's our history and it's our community. Join us as we explore what it means to be a part of the whiskey culture. Tenth Mountain Whiskey and Spirit Company has been churning out delicious spirits in the beautiful Colorado countryside since 2014. In that time, they've grown substantially but they've also grown the ways in which they give back to their community. Named after the legendary 10th Mountain Division, they've been focused on giving back to the veterans who've given so much for us and our freedoms. Welcome to the Rick House with Whiskey Culture. I'm Greg, your host. Let's see just what makes this distillery so unique. Hey guys, welcome to season three of the Rick House here with Whiskey Culture. We're at 10th Mountain Whiskey and Spirits Co. I'm Greg. My name's Ryan. And we are gonna take you through the distillery. We're gonna take you to see how all of the 10th Mountain uh, whiskey is made. And we're gonna take you over to the tasting room in Vail. So everyone be ready. We're gonna have a great time here, but the thing that everyone wants to know is, how did you guys get started? Figured someone in this town is gonna make whiskey sooner or later and said, might as well be us. So that was about seven, eight years ago, and here we are today. So how did you get started? I mean, you had to have that initial, hey, I'm gonna make whiskey moment. Sure. But, I mean, what was the process? Everyone dreams of having a distillery. I mean, as, especially all the people that are viewing, but what, what was that process like to just decide, hey, I'm gonna make whiskey, and then to go make it happen? Sure. Well, I've got a, a background in bartending, first of all. When I uh, first moved out to Vail, Colorado in 98, started bartending around town for the first couple of years, and then started a restaurant in 2002, uh, the West Side Cafe, and um, the natural uh, next progression, I uh, started making uh, home brewing with uh, make my own beer a couple times a year, and then uh, the next step after that's distilling. So we're just kind of watching what the craft distiller movement was doing in uh, the uh, early mid 2000s, late 2009, 10, and then uh, was like, hell, let's let's see if I can make this happen. Awesome. So, I mean, you you had to go learn to make the whiskey. You had to come back here. You had to set up shop. I mean, how, how did that feel emotionally that first year? getting everything together and just, you know, learning to make it and then just making it happen. Was it kind of, was there a plan in place or was it like, we're just gonna do this? Yeah, no, there is a good plan in place. So I went out to Moonshine University in Louisville, Kentucky and, and got hands-on distilling uh, knowledge there. Met a lot of the right uh, folks in the, in the industry, leaned on uh, quite a few of the instructors that I met at uh, Moonshine U. Um, came back and wrote a business plan and, and uh, here we are today. So, but yeah, there's, there's definitely a plan in place. <laughs> awesome, I mean, that's good. It's there are, uh, there's a big difference between having the plan in place and kind of just flying solo. But it, I mean, it's good to hear, it's seven years, that's, that's past that point where you're kind of, you know, on, on uh, thin sure. ice there. But I mean, you guys have been here, you guys have been doing all of this, uh, this great whiskey, not just whiskey, but other kinds right. of spirits. Yeah, exactly. We make, uh, we, hang, we hang our hat on our whiskey expressions, something we're very proud and passionate about, but we make a great uh, Tenth Mountain Potato Vodka. We uh, had an opportunity to uh, make brandy from uh, Pinot Noir grapes that are grown in Monterey, California. Uh, that was not really in the business plan early on, but uh, had a, a good friend owns this vineyard and he had 3,500 gallons of Pinot Noir that uh, was just lying around. And so he sent it out to us to distill off and uh, we aged it in our bourbon barrels for two years and just launched that. Uh, we also make a cordial, which is a sage peach vanilla cordial. It's a little on the sweeter side, uh, but it makes a, a, a great sipping cocktail after a, a day of skiing, so. Awesome. And so I, I heard that you guys do a lot with uh, the military and sure. veterans, is that right? Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, absolutely. Well, our namesake is uh, in honor of the 10th Mountain Armed Division, which uh, trained in our area in the 1940s. And when they returned from World War II, they won some very significant battles in World War II. And when they came back uh, here to the States, they uh, wanted to share the outdoor skiing lifestyle that they had fallen in love with while training. Uh, they were a mountain warfare specific division in, in World War II. So uh, they trained just south of us in a place called Camp Hale. 
and they came back and over 62 different ski resorts across the country were started by 10th Mountain Vets and Vail Mountain being one of those mountains. So we wanted to honor those guys uh, with our namesake and they're still one of the most uh, uh, deployed divisions today and they're based in upstate New York in a place called Fort Drum. Excellent. Well, let's get started. Cheers. Past the bar, through an unassuming set of double doors, magic is made. Or rather, it's distilled. Tenth Mountain takes pride in their whiskey, always making sure they're putting out premium juice to keep their fans satisfied. Here, quality is king, and flavor is a product of passion. All right, everyone, we're here in the production room with Sean Hogan, head distiller for 10th Mountain. Thank you for having us. Absolutely, we're so excited to have you guys here. So uh, as you can see, they've got just a, a couple of barrels resting back here, but what is a day in the life of the head distiller for 10th Mountain? It's a very, very, very early morning. Uh, every day I get here between 3.30 and 4. And the main reason for that is just to turn on the boiler, get that heated up and get our cooker and our still ready to go. Awesome. So how did you get started here at 10th Mountain? My dear friend, Ryan, Ryan Thompson, who actually we weren't that great of friends. We've just known each other for years. We've worked together in the Valley forever. I had been a bartender for 20 years. He came up to me at one of the bar places I worked and said, I need to talk to you tomorrow. And I said, okay. And he told me they were thinking of starting a distillery. And I was very excited, but he wanted me to run their tasting room because I bartended in the Valley for so long. And I told him, eh, I'm getting too old for bartending. He said, we'll run our distillery. And then he sent me to Moonshine University in Louisville. And that's it. So you both are alums of Moonshine University. Absolutely we are. Yeah. So you got early mornings. We had a, a complete happenstance with you coming into 10th Mountain. What are you guys working on right now? Is there some, are there projects that you guys are, are working on trying to innovate any new products? Or are we focusing on the line that you have right sure. now? We are focusing on what we're doing right now because we are getting a whole bunch of new orders from California, uh, Massachusetts, Georgia, wherever. But we are trying a couple new things. Uh, we just started our single malt. We did a first run of that. It sold out in two months from the tasting room in Vail. Uh, as the years go on, we're gonna have more and more of that. Um, and then we're, we have a chocolate rye and a chocolate bourbon that are brand new things that we're about to start doing. We're very excited about. Those will be ready probably in the first two months of 2022. So a chocolate bourbon. Yeah. That sounds like it will be awesome. Yeah. Um, so you all are focused right now on expansion and, and just growing the, the portfolio because you have demand coming from other states, Absolutely. which is awesome. Yeah. I mean, it just shows that there's, uh, that there's a demand for the product, that it's good stuff. We're feeling good. We're that's, feeling good. I mean, good. every once in a while, I'd be like, ah, things have kind of leveled out or whatever. And then literally the next day, Ryan will come to me with something that he or our national sales guy, Jason, has started that two more states are going to come on in the next three months. So we got to get got to get to work filling up more barrels and filling up more bottles. And one of the things that people don't necessarily realize, they think, OK, well, the demand comes in. Let's just make more whiskey. But it's not, it's not the case. All of these barrels back here have to sit. They have to age, they exactly. have to mature. Exactly. So it's almost like, uh, you know how everyone always asks why roads are perpetually uh, under, under construction, construction. <laughs> yeah, and being built? It's because as the, as the population grows, mm -hmm. you know, they have to push through permitting, they have to get the roads ready, they have to get the contracts out. And I'd assume it's, it's probably the same way here, exactly right? Exactly the same thing. I mean, we would love to just be able to put out everything we have not old enough all the time uh, that that is a huge thing that we that we deal with making sure that it's old enough and ready to go um, God, he, Ryan does a really great job of constantly opening new uh, you know new, new dis distributors or new states that's our challenge is to keep up with that and we're excited to do it and so far we've been able to so being the distiller here yeah. learning on the go moonshine University, what is one of the biggest challenges that you've faced as a head distiller here? 
probably the biggest thing is consistency. Every time you do something, there's so many variables. When you do a cook, when you do a distillation, when you do a ferment, fermentation, there's just small little things that don't seem like that much to you, but they can change everything so much. They can change the yield, they can change the flavor. So that has been the hardest thing, is trying to keep it right at the same set point where everything we do. And that's what we're going for. And that's where the artistry comes in, exactly. right? Having to adjust on the fly. Yeah. That's where all that hands-on expertise that you've got exactly. comes into play, right? Hands-on expertise, that's what I call it. Yeah, I've been doing <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, yes. I mean, that's that's the fun of it, because different things have come up every day and it makes it so interesting and so fun to do this. This is my dream job right now. Distillation moves to aging, and after aging, bottling. For some reason, we keep finding ourselves put to work on that line. Some dream of being a celebrity in their past life, some dream they were rich beyond measure, but I'm pretty sure we were just humble bottlers. And after seeing how the whiskey is made, and yes, bottled, we wanted to take a deeper dive into the story of 10th Mountain and how they're helping their community. So we're here with Stephen Jacobs, sales rep for 10th Mountain Whiskey and Spirits Co. So we talked a little bit about uh, the impact that you guys are having on the veterans community with Ryan, but you having been in the military, somebody that's here and is, is helping with these projects, how does that impact you? Well, it's just an honor to be able to come in and help out the VELVETS program as uh, um, an ex-vet myself. You know, I've been able to see firsthand what uh, conflict can do to people uh, mentally and physically. And um, it's just an honor to be able to come to work and make a living every day and take those proceeds and be able to help the VELVETS get their lives back together. And so Vail Vets, tell us a little bit about that. What, what specifically does uh, Vail Vets do for veterans? What they do is uh, veterans of all branches that have uh, been to conflict and dealt with the emotional and physical um, problems that come from going to war. They'll come and come out and see us uh, a couple of times a year and uh, we are able to take those proceeds and put them together, whatever kind of physical uh, uh, challenges they have, put them together, something that can help them learn how to ski and enjoy our mountain lifestyle and use that to put their lives back together. That is so cool. And one of the things that is, is great is we drove through Vail. You know, we've been out here. Uh, Colorado is such a beautiful place and, and there's something about that, that natural environment, uh, the, the accomplishment that comes with making it down a slope. I, I mean, I've been skiing and I'm right. not good at it by any means. I spent more time uh, tumbling than I did actually skiing. Sure. But, but coming through and break, breaking through in this natural element, seeing the beauty that comes with that in, in the sense of accomplishment that's gotta go with that. I mean, that's gotta be hugely impactful for them. Absolutely, you can't put a price on being able to use our wonderful surroundings here in Colorado, as well as our ski mountain, and the help of people that can that can take these people that have been, you know, uh, mentally and physically challenged, and be able to put them together a program that can teach them how to, to uh, ski and get out and and start to put their lives back together after dealing with the stress of conflict. And on a on a personal note for you, watching the the distillery that you work for pour their heart and their soul into helping these projects what is that like for you personally to to be able to be a part of that it's just very rewarding it's hard to explain to civilians what it's like to be in the military a and b what it's like to go to conflict and to completely change your life for the freedom of others and to be able to take one of the greatest states in our country and its beautiful geography and be able to use that to heal and bring these guys back together and help them put a life together after what they've given for our freedom, it's, it's priceless. And I think one of the things that's beautiful is that 
you know, we're, we, you're right, we are in a beautiful state and we've traveled all around the country visiting various distilleries and, and uh, this is one of the most beautiful places that I've ever been, but absolutely right on the healing, just driving through the mountains, seeing the, yes. the snow. I mean, it, it's a, a piece of serenity, but one of the other things that's amazing that I don't think people quite understand is how the whiskey industry and the whiskey community is not just all about you know pouring spirits from a bottle and and just drink it. there's a lot of celebration that comes with whiskey sure. connections community uh and all of that but there's another beauty to it and it's the positive impact that a distillery like 10th mountain right uh, the positive impact that you guys can have on not just an individual but an entire community Absolutely. is so incredible well we you know most of us that live here and work here and have been here for years and years are from other states and we know what it's like to come here and live in a very special place and to be able to take that and use it um, uh, in, in the Vail Veterans Program to help these individuals rebuild their lives and give them hope and give them a, a chance at a better life after what they've done for us is just, um, and we're honored to give back as much as we can. We, we know how lucky we are. We want to share it with others and help them rebuild. The demand for 10th Mountain Whiskey is ravenous. So much so that they've opened another tasting room in the picturesque town of Vail. It's a winter destination for skiers and snowboarders in the winter months, seeing over 1.3 million visitors each year. And while most of Vail is dedicated to tourists flocking in to hit the slopes, 10th Mountain's tasting room here retains the same cozy family feel as the distillery, making it a great place to visit at any time of the year. So how many people do you guys get coming through here on an average day? You know what, it's about 125 people on a daily basis, which is pretty cool to think about. Yeah, it's uh, sometimes it's a little slower and sometimes it's elbow to elbow in here packed. So it uh, really just depends on the time of year, but uh, average wise about 125 people each day. So well, I mean, that's really cool to, to think about, you know, you guys are 30 minutes away in Gypsum. You come here into Vail and, and to think not only are people visiting the distillery and checking that out, but people are here, here in Vail just being being exposed to 10th Mountain and and rolling through here and I mean in this beautiful scenic, scenic right. space and they get to roll into your distillery sure. and, and the tasting room for your distillery and just experience everything that you guys have to offer and you guys have rolling cocktails uh, you guys yep. do a different hot drink every day yep. you're saying exactly yeah. and uh, you're doing different infusions and yep. everything like that I mean do you keep that bar program going and keep it fresh I mean in, in such a highly trafficked area what's that like yeah we do it's really important to us to uh, experiment with our spirits and and to be able to uh, to showcase uh, what we're able to do with them but with different infusions with different barrel aged cocktails um, Mark McDonald who man behind the bar uh, is in charge of all of our infusions, so he uh, always has a good time with him. He kind of lives on the edge of doing the experiment with different things. Uh, so it's a lot of fun. You can come in here today and then come back tomorrow, and it's going to be uh, different cocktails that we that we're featuring. So um, it's really important to us to to, to uh, stay on the edge with that. So so everyone that comes to Vail for skiing needs to stop in Tenth Mountain. You're damn right they do. Yeah, <laughs> and they need to try. Yeah, all this crazy. I mean, we've tried, and, and it's not just whiskey. You know, you guys are whiskey. Sure and spirit yeah. company Short. you guys we have here you know we I've, I'm trying some of the brandy which is great right um, but then we've got we've got bourbon we've got rye whiskey we've got American single malt yeah what, what are some of the other things that you guys have on, on a regular basis somebody that might not be a whiskey person what can they come here and try our cordial is really popular with that crowd that doesn't uh, maybe gravitate towards whiskey but it's a sage peach vanilla cordial it's 70 proof it's uh, a little on the sweeter side and so it makes a great uh, standalone cocktail by itself, uh, but it mixes really well with our rye whiskey too. Um, but that's a great go-to. Uh, you mentioned our brandy. We have a potato vodka as well that uh, people, uh, vodka drinkers love. And so, and vodka, that gives us a lot of flexibility to do different infusions with our vodka. But we also have an, a, a moonshine, which is our Colorado Clear Mountain Moonshine, which is 100% unaged corn whiskey. So it never sees the inside of a barrel, uh, but it's delicious nonetheless. So uh, I tried some of that new make right off yeah. the still today, and it was... Really, really good, I have to say. But I, I'm a new make person. Sure. But I, I mean, I guess that gives me a frame of reference because I've yeah, tried a lot of 
lot exactly, of Exactly, right? And that is by far one of the better ones I've had. It's one of my most favorite things to do with people that come to visit the distillery when we have, when the still's lit up and, and we have new make whiskey coming off the still, to be able to introduce that flavor to people that probably haven't ever traded. And I know with your line of work that you've, you've tasted quite a bit of new make whiskey coming off the still, but um, it's, a, it's a cool opportunity. And a lot of people out there don't realize that whiskey comes off the still clear as water, clear yep. as vodka, clear as everything. So um, they don't understand that it gets the color from the age in the barrel. So it's really fun to be able to introduce that aspect to uh, to people that are maybe aren't as, uh, as as experienced as maybe you and I are. So <laughs> awesome. So if you had to tell everybody watching one thing about Tenth Mountain, one thing, what would you want to tell them? We're a philanthropic, award-winning craft distillery located in the Colorado Rockies. We work our tail off, and we have a great time doing it. And I gotta say, we met a lot of the people here. You guys will, uh, you guys met them through the episode, and I mean, there's a lot of passion. There's a lot of love that goes behind this. There's a colorful cast of characters. I might, yes, I might yeah, add. Absolutely. But uh, everyone brings something unique to the table. It really was uh, a great time. I mean, it's a great distillery. Beautiful drive. If you're coming to Colorado, you are not going to be disappointed. Just the drive to get to 10th Mountain was yeah. just breathtaking. Uh, but then you come into Vail and it, it's just a beautiful town. It's a beautiful place. And so people really don't even have to go too far off the beaten path right. to experience 10th Mountain, at least to come to Vail and try the tasting room here and bring a bottle home. Yeah, exactly. You nailed it. We're, we're right in the heart of Vail Village. So if you're coming to Vail, you're going to pass us twice, once coming in and once leaving Vail Village. So yeah, it's, it's a good good spot. Thank you everyone for joining us. And Ryan, thank you for having us to see this beautiful tasting room in Vail and then having us over to the distillery to see how everything is made. It means a lot to us, the fact that you guys took the time out to come visit, Just checked out the shop at the, in Gypsum and then the tasting room here in Vail Village. So thank you, appreciate it. If they want to follow you guys, how can they do it? On social at Tenth MTN Whiskey or our website's tenthwhiskey.com and you can buy direct from there, ship it to your house. Awesome. Thank you again for having us everyone you can follow whiskey culture on all major social medias you can follow us on youtube and subscribe to get more episodes of the rick house thank you all for joining us we'll see you next time cheers thank you for spending time with us down here at the rick house brought to you by whiskey culture this show wouldn't be possible without your dedication to the whiskey community and continued support don't forget to like the video and subscribe to learn more about the world of whiskey